Man, I need a new pair of underwear. I haven't changed my undies in like 17 days. YouTube, what are you doing in here, you little sneak? Shipping some merch. Hope for the post office doesn't make you cry today. Bye. That's a real story, by the way. On multiple accounts, my wife has come back from the post office crying. I don't know what the post office is doing to people that work there, but they are miserable. <laughs> All right, first task of the day, we gotta finish those plinths we started yesterday. And I have a little bit of a confession to make. I kind of cheated on Blender with uh, Fusion 360. Sorry, Trent. Honestly, it just seemed like Fusion 360 was more suited for what I was trying to do, which is something closer to precision engineering, less freeform, which Blender is good at. And I finished this model in like under an hour with minimal looking up and minimal help. So it seemed like the right tool for the job. But this is how I made them. And in case you want them for whatever project, you can find them linked in the description below for download. The way Fusion 360 works is that you start from a 2D sketch and then you extrude the design from there. So the first thing I did was make a circle and then cut it in half with a line. And then using the break and trim tool, I kind of cut away everything else that I didn't need. Once I had my pie slice extruded, I went back into sketch mode and drew another circle that would then be the recess where the model's base would go. Once the circle is placed, you can just extrude into the shape, making a nice little inset. Because I was feeling a little confident at this point, I made magnet wells on the underside, so when these four things are arranged together, they'll snap together nicely with magnetic force. And that's it. I put it in G2 box and made it hollow so it wouldn't use a ton of resin, and I didn't do it on this, but I should have. I should have raised the design up a little bit so it printed on supports. I think if you print the thing right on the build plate, it'll develop a little bit of a resin foot, but I think I should be able to sand it away just fine. I don't know if anyone noticed, but I have a light on top of my camera rig right now just to give my face a little bit more fill. It's pointed straight at the ceiling, but it also has some fun modes such as police mode, paparazzi mode. All right, enough mucking around with the lights. How do I turn this off? Okay, with those 3D designs done, it's not time to print them out. So I gotta go find my 3D printer, which I haven't used in a long time. Well, I found it. Yeah, it looks like I uh, gave up on a print <laughs> last time I didn't clean it out. All right, this is gonna be interesting. Now, I don't have access to power on this side of the workshop, but I do on the other side, which is a little bit messy right now, so we're gonna have to do some cleaning up. Okay, the easy cleanup was done. Now we gotta do the more difficult cleanup, which is uh, removing whatever monstrosity I left in this resin vat last time I printed with it. Ooh, they eat their wounded. Is it just me or do pet owners have 7,000 names for all of their animals? This is Crusher or Baby C or Crush or Crushy or Quuzz or Quasimodo or Crusher the Musher, Crush Mush, Crush Meister, and Baby Boy. <laughs> this is Bullet or Bull or Bully or Bully Wooly or Baby Goo or Baby B or Cute as fuck! I want lists down in the comments section of all your pet's nicknames now. It's cooking time with Scott. I need to prep a roast real fast for dinner, so let's do that. If there's one thing I learned about dealing with raw chicken, it's just have everything ready to go 
at your cutting board so you don't have to wash your hands repeatedly. Another pro tip, moisture is the enemy of browning and crispiness and flavor, so let's try to dry this off as much as possible. <laughs> it's also gonna dry out when it's sitting in the fridge with salt on it. Another pro tip for crispy skin, try to separate the skin from the breast meat. All right, now let's salt the heck out of this thing. What's gonna happen with the salt is that it's going to draw moisture out of the meat. The moisture is going to dissolve the salt and then the chicken is going to reabsorb the salt. And it's going to change how the meat retains moisture, making it uh, more moist in the long run, which white meat needs the help. If you feel like you're putting too much salt on, put more on. <laughs> If possible, try to get seasoning under the skin as well. I don't know why, but I forgot to do it this time. I'm gonna cut out the spine of the chicken so it lays flat while cooking, uh, allowing it to cook more evenly. Also, if you make your own chicken stock, don't throw this away. This is fantastic for stock. Hey, Amber, can you grab my Tupperware container that has my spines in it? Sounds so macabre. Just break the chicken spine until it lays flat. And then toss it on your wire rack. Tuck the tips of the wings under so they don't burn in the oven later on, and let it chill out in the fridge for however long. By the way, all these things I'm sharing with you are things that I learned from the Series Heat cooking blog and the author and cook Kenji. He's fantastic, check him out. That concludes Cooking Time with Scott. All right, with that thing printing, the last thing we're gonna do today is a little bit of freehand. There they are. They're pretty much done other than their bases and also, possibly putting a sick freehand on that banner. So I think I'm gonna do that now. And you can always put things that are kind of more obvious on them, like bat wings or fangs or a goblet of blood, but I kind of want to get a little inspiration before I make my choice. We're going to the depths of my basement right now where I keep all my books. Old battle tomes for vampire accounts. That'll give us some iconography inspiration. Another reason I want to do this freehand is because the sepulchral guard tier of my Patreon has an upcoming meeting where we're all supposed to experiment with freehand. And I thought that this would be a good opportunity for me to do that. Well, I think Vlog Scott has an idea. Okay, I got an idea, but first I need some supplies. I need some plastic wrap. I need some tape. I need a compressor and an airbrush. I need some tiny cups. The first step is to wrap the model in some plastic wrap because we're going to be using some airbrushing. I don't want to get any paint on the model. I'm going to start with a off-white yellow tone here and just spraying it directly onto the flag in kind of a spherical shape. Then with a bright white, I'll spray in the center of the flag so there's a little hot spot right in the middle. And you can totally see it, right guys? And then with a few strips of tape, I'll make a wider piece of tape and using my circle cutter, I'll make a little circular mask that I'll Press onto the banner and tease out the edges with a, a broken airbrush needle. I'll paint over that with a very dark burgundy color. And then around the circle itself, I'll do a somewhat brighter red color. And then lastly, after that, I'll do an even more saturated red color right around the circle. And now for the big reveal. Oh, don't scratch the pewter with the metal needle, please. Honestly, I've never had masking tape work this well. All right, now let's mess it up by painting on top of it with some black paint. If you want a really good summary of all of the knowledge that I have about freehanding, I made a video and you can find that linked in the top right hand corner right now. Essentially, I'm gonna start with a very simple shape. In this case, I wanna paint a sword eventually, so I'm painting a little vertical stripe right down the middle that will eventually become my sword blade. I'm trying to always paint by dragging the brush down. So if I need to paint, say, like the guard of the sword, I'm going to rotate the model 90 degrees so I can paint the guard with downstrokes. The best advice I can give you for freehanding is to start simple and then make the shape more complicated. Make sure you have it center or wherever you want it to be. Make sure all your proportions are correct and then start to add fancy stuff on top of it. For this banner, I was inspired by the Blood Knight banner that you see in the box art, but I wanted my own symbol. So I wanted to do a sword with some bat wings on it with some really raggedy skin. Additionally, I wanted to add some bats in the corner of the banner like flying out as a form of like gradation. So like the corners are getting darker because of the swarm of bats, but also because it looks cool. Lastly, being inspired by MC Monster on Instagram, who does a lot of backlit stuff, I added kind of a backlit rim light to everything with some yellow paint. This helped to define the freehand further, but also 
gave it a little bit of touch of realism. I was pretty happy with the result I got. This took about an hour to do, and I plan to add a little bit more to it on this Friday stream. So if you want to see that, come hang out at twitch.tv slash miniac. That's going to do it for this vlog, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the positive comments on the first episodes. It means a lot to see those nice comments. We got our chicken dinner. We're ready to rock. We'll see you tomorrow for episode number four. If you like the channel, you want to support it, there are many links in the description that will enable you to do so. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... Hey, my